Nice. Where's that at? Los Gatos. Hello, everybody. Thank you for joining us today for our webinar on top 10 home buying mistakes to avoid. Um, I'm Eric with Two Homes, and our special guest today is John Thompson, one of the founders of Intero. Thank you for joining us, John. Good to see you, Eric, and happy to be here. Uh, have this fun conversation on uh, what to be aware of. Yep. And as I was just telling John, this uh, sneak peek of uh, my newest listing that was going on the market this week, it's in Los Gatos. So walking distance to downtown Los Gatos and Los Gatos High School. Um, so we'll give it a few minutes for people to- Like a beautiful, out. beautiful home. What's it, uh, what's the price range on it? Um, we're gonna go on at um, 2598. So just under $2.6 million. All right. Good job. Thank you. Very excited. We're gonna do an open house this weekend. Um, Yay, they're back. Yes, that's super exciting um, that they're back. It's my favorite, one of my favorite things. Yeah. Well, for buyers too. Yes. All right. I, I guess we can get started. Um, no, we're gonna go through top 10 list and the number one uh, mistake is not getting pre-approved. So it's it's pretty challenging to, to go shopping without knowing what you can afford. And, and that's essentially what the pre-approval does for us. So it knows um, talking with the lender will, will give us a better idea of, of uh, what you can afford and what options you might have. Yeah, couldn't agree more, right? Uh, especially in the market we're in now, Eric, mm -hmm. you know, the sellers, you know, having many buyers to choose from, if you don't have a pre-approval from a bank, if you're getting a loan, uh, you're going to be way down on the seller's totem pole of somebody that they're excited about working with. So that, that's, that's a, you know, yet another good reason. <clears throat> yep. And um, we were just briefly talking about this before, but number two is only looking online instead of in person. Um, we, with technology and being in the in Silicon Valley, there's a lot of new cool technologies to walk through homes. There's a thing called Matterport, which is kind of like a virtual um, 3D tour that takes you through the house, but not, nothing can really replace uh, walking in and actually seeing the house and also seeing the, the neighborhood and the neighbors. And now recently, just two weeks ago, the state, allowed open houses again. So we can now um, freely go in and take taking a look at homes following all the correct um, COVID protocols. The, the uh, a lighthearted joke around that can be um, just ask anybody that's done online dating before whether or not you know the actual the mm -hmm. reality <laughs> is different than what's online, right? So yeah, you know do not do not just trust uh, only online, especially if you're not a Especially if you're not a real experienced home buyer, but now now it looks like that that uh, is going to be a lot easier for all buyers to actually get into the properties again uh, uh, without any issues. Yeah, and and the other the other small thing, small large thing that I like to mention too is it's such a large purchase, right? So it's not like going on Amazon and buying a pair of pants, right? Or you know going to Nordstrom and buying a shirt, it's a multi-million dollar investment that you're making. And so uh, I think it's very worthwhile to uh, touch and feel it, go and see it. Maybe they can't touch everything with the current protocols, but at least seeing everything in person. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that actually goes back to, again, your number one about the bank pre-approval, making sure that you use a bank that is referred, that, that either you as a buyer have a relationship with or that the agent has a relationship with. Do not, do not get sucked into the Quicken loan. Hey, it's a quarter percent cheaper. And you know, that they may not close for six months. They may never close. Um, use somebody that you trust and that, uh, and or that the agent uh, trusts and knows because it's, it's that critical. Yeah, I'll, I'll just further, uh collaborate on that too. Like I've, I've had experiences with, um, yeah, we didn't have to name specific companies, but like Rocket Mortgage slash Quicken Loans, um, they're, um, they're the number one lender in the country. So let's not discount that. 
However, um, the all the majority of their loans are are, con are conventional, not jumbo. And the majority of purchases here in Silicon Valley are jumbo. So they're not as familiar with with um, the loans that we we generally our, our clients um, work with. And so right. it's critical that it's a good partnership between the the buyer, the agent, and everyone else involved, including the lender, to to make this a smooth transaction. Since our our market is just so so dynamic here. Yeah. I think the a quick side of I think the rest of the country from the news I've been reading is kind of mirroring the market that we've had for quite some time with, with the speed things are moving and, and with with just how, how things how things go here. And so here we were a little bit more accustomed to that, but other parts of the country it, um, it's starting to happen as well with the pandemic. Yeah, I, I can confirm that. I was just on a call this morning with executives from uh, real estate companies all over the country that it's it's uh, you know what we're experiencing here is experiencing in probably 90 percent of the markets yeah and whereas we've been it's been similar to like this for the past 20 30 years like this is um this is kind of what we've been doing and so then going jumping to the third thing is about schools and that's not verifying the schools um, here in, in Silicon Valley, it's kind of odd the way our, our schools work that the city boundaries don't necessarily go with the, with the school boundaries. So um, a good example um, is like this listing that I have in Los Gatos. There are Los Gatos houses with Campbell schools, right? This is a Los Gatos house with Los Gatos schools. So it doesn't necessarily, just because you live in a certain city, you will go to that city schools, unfortunately. And um, um, schools are, are are quite important for, for families and people that want to send their kids to those schools. Yeah, yeah, in Silicon Valley, I mean, the what school district the house belongs to is is equally as important to verify just like you would the roof or the foundation, right? I mean, it's, it's that critical um, because home values differ, you know, they differentiate a lot between one school district and another, so. It's, uh, it's really important, even if you don't have kids in school, just to be aware of it, that what school district is it, so you know and, and understand if that is a, you know, going to be a, a piece that the buyer's going to question when you sell the home down the road. Mm -hmm. And one last thing about that is school ranking. So um, right now in California, there is no definite score from the state. Um, there was a program before, it was called the API program, which ended in 2013, and that was directly correlated to the student's test score. So now that's no longer the case. And so um, having a realtor that's an expert in the schools will really help you on that because not every eight or nine is the same eight or nine based on, on the area. It, it just very, it's very different um, based on the history of the um, test, testing here in California. Yeah. Yep. All right. Going to number four. Um, this is this is in the news now for across the country. Is expecting the sales price of the home to equal the listing or asking price of the house. So, John, you can start off on that one. Yeah. It's a, you know, and I get it, right? It's a tough one to swallow for a lot of buyers, right? When you see a, a list price, and you just have to, you know, you know understand that that has nothing to do with what you know the market value might be sometimes right so you know and a lot of times agents are 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 putting a list price on a property strategically low in order to generate multiple offers and sort of a a frenzy around a house so you just have to know that. That's why, again, if you know, it's important to get market educated with a good buyer's agent to understand. Don't don't get hung up on that list price. It has nothing to do with the value of the house today. It could be high. It could be low. It could be spot on, but it you don't know. E each one you have to look at individually, but it doesn't necessarily equate anything to, you know, the value of the property. Yeah, I, I don't have much to add to that. It's, it, yeah, it, it, it can be, the list price can be too high, it can be above market price, and it can yep. end up selling below that. It could be below the, the market value, end up selling significantly above that, and it could be right at the market value and sell right at that. But 
it just depends, um, which one of John, John's favorite things to say is it depends. And so I think depends. Ha having an expert team working with you is, is just the best way to, to get educated on that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to look at each each in house individually, right? You know, two houses in this in the same neighborhood could have co two completely different list prices, uh, and that you know that has nothing to do with the value of each property. Just know it's it's a number. You 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 technically could could list every property at one dollar that you know that you put on the market and make every house kind of like an auction. And then whatever the highest number is that a buyer says, I won't pay any more, then that's the value of the property. So the list price, you know, again, depending on this, you know, the strategy that the seller and the listing agent have uh, going into putting a home on the market, you know, you know, will, you know, determine what the actual ending up sales price of a house might be. Yeah. And for a, um, I'll add on is the appraisal process. So um, something that we've been encountering um, for a long time now, but even more more in a bigger amount uh, recently is appraisals. So appraisals are not market prices of homes. Appraisals are historic based on historical prices of homes. So home escrows usually last about 30 days. And so when you get a loan, the bank requires an appraisal, which is a third party um, person to go out and give a valuation, valuation of, of the property, but it's based on old data. And so um, that's something to know and think about that a lot of times um, homes are selling for higher than what they end up getting appraised for. And then having the discussion up front on what, what that entails. Um, if you're interested, you can reach out to me further and we can talk about it. But appraisals are a large yeah. factor right now. Yeah, it, it's a good point, right? Just, just know that appraisals can, but they don't necessarily have anything to do with the value of the home uh, as well, right? The, remember, the appraisal isn't done for the buyer, even mm -hmm. though the buyer has to pay for it. Yeah. The appraisal is done to protect the bank to make sure their investment is secure, period, end of story, right? And, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's the true value of the property. I know Appraisals that have been high, that they never should have been that high and low, never should have been that low. But the reason the, the, the appraisal was done was not for to determine necessarily true market value. It was to it was done to protect the bank's interest in lending on that particular property. So, you know, don't 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 rely on that, you know, as as a hey, I, I bought it and it was below appraisal or I paid over appraisal, then be upset. It, that it doesn't necessarily, you know, they, they don't necessarily match the appraisal and the true market value of any property, especially today. Yep. So we'll jump on to number five, and that's not having a buyer's agent for a new construction purchase. So um, what a lot of buyers don't know is that um, even for new construction, you can have an agent a, real, a realtor represent you. And um, that's strongly recommended because they're, the builder has a realtor representing them, right? And so it's always good to have um, representation for yourself or someone to look out for your interests. And um, a good example would be um, that not every new home is perfect, right? So there's always problems with and, 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 and things that need to be fixed on homes. And disclosures and, and, and all of that stuff as well. So like a good example is like cars, right? Even brand new cars um, have problems. And so um, that's, yeah, JT can, or John can elaborate on that as well. Yeah, I mean, look, it, it, I'll, I'll just reiterate what you said. It, it never hurts to have an outsider's opinion you know, the, the, you know, the generally the builders do want their reputation and they care about it and they don't want unhappy buyers, but, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily mean that, um, you know, a buyer walking into a new construction shouldn't have an outsider second opinion on the contract, the terms they're agreeing to, you know, the, you know, sometimes again, they don't even understand that there's sometimes, depending on how hot the, the project or the development is, there's some things that can be negotiated, the upgrades and various pricing or credits on, uh, you know, paying for some of the lender costs, all of those different things 
that the agent that's sitting out there working for the builder isn't going to generously offer all that up to you. Yeah. So having some representation matters in, in, in all purchases. Yep. Um, and number six, and we're kind of alluding to that already from number five, is not carefully reviewing all the disclosures and inspections. And so um, having someone um, walk you through that process is extremely important because um, there is a lot of, of things to know about um, a home purchase, right? Home inspection, um, termite inspection, possibly roof inspection. And if it's um, a little more rural property, there's like septic, well, um, additional inspections as well. And as well as disclosures about the condition of the property that are required um, by, by law from, from the seller. Probably one of the biggest things that we do, right? And during a transaction, Eric is, you know, really working through the dis seller disclosures and all the home inspections with the buyer, you know, and, 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 we, you know, you and I have seen countless number of reports on properties. We know how to read them. We know the red flags. We know, you know, things that, it, that are, when they're pointed out that you need to do a further deeper dive into when a home inspector mentions something, you know, that, you know, we should probably have a specialist in this area come look at this. Um, and then some things that sound ominous on reports that you want to know also the opposite happens. A, a buyer freaks out about something that's like, hold on, you know, this is a $5 fix <laughs> Home Depot on a Sunday afternoon. Don't not buy the house because of this issue. But it sounds, it sounds horrible on sometimes on a report. So again, goes back to just having an agent that knows how to read them, knows how to look at these reports and disclosures and advise you as to, you know, things that we really need to pay attention to and, and things that, okay, you know, yes, these are things, but they're normal, they're fixable, they're just, you know, uh, not something that you should, that should not keep you from buying this home. Yep, and we'll jump to number seven, is not researching and, and understanding the neighborhood um, that the house is in. So we've talked mostly about the specific house that you're looking at, but um, the neighbors matter as well. Um, so. One good example is like trains, right? So like some trains are more commuter trains and so they run at specific times. Some trains are freight trains and they run 24 hours a day, right? So that's certain things like that you might wanna know. And other things are like development in the neighborhood. Like if you, if a shopping center nearby is gonna be torn down and built into residential housing, then that's something to consider as well. So the overall neighborhood is quite important as well that you're moving into besides just the house that you're buying. Yeah, I, I always like to say, you know, go go visit the house at various times throughout the day too, right? Yeah. You know, you buy a house near a school, you should probably go check out what it's like at around three o'clock and around eight o'clock in the morning, right? You know, when school's coming and going, and you know, and you know, how is the tra how are the traffic patterns and the noise at night, you know, et cetera. Um, so. You know, yeah, do do the neighborhood research. Don't don't if you go to the house at the same time every day, that's not a good idea. Go stop by and just even hang out, right? And and park your car and just observe the neighborhood at various times. It's such it's that important of investment. You know, you need to spend that kind of time making sure you're comfortable with everything that you're seeing and feeling because you're going to open, you're going to turn the key to that house, you know, for the next you know, two, three, five, 10, 20 years, uh, you better be very aware of, you know, everything that's happening in, in the neighborhood at different times. Yep. And number eight, um, we're going towards ignoring the HOA impact. And this, so this applies mainly to um, condos and townhouses. And so HOAs, homeowners associations can play a big part of your life, a big part in your life if you are an owner in one of those communities. And there's all kinds of rules and regulations that you will have to follow or be potentially fined upon. And so having your agent being able to explain to you those, um, those risks and benefits of, of an HR are really important because um, it, it can be a lot of benefits. Like um, in a condo that I used to live in had a pool and clubhouse, right? That's amazing that you just, you don't have to pay any pool maintenance on it. The HOA takes care of it as part of your HOA. And other ones, for example, really, detail specific like you cannot work on your car in the street right you can't change your oil you can't do that and so just little things like that are, are really important if you're a car person 
for example, you're a cool person. Knowing that is really important. Yeah. One thing I like to tell buyers is when you get the homeowners association package in an offer that you're making on a, on a home is to make sure you read the meeting minutes of yeah. the homeowners association. Cause that's when, that's when everybody, you know, gossips and bitches, so to speak, Sorry if uh, that offends anybody. Right. But that's when you hear all the, you know, quote unquote dirt in the development. And if it's a big deal for you or not, right. Somebody's yeah. complaining about somebody's dogs or this or that. And, you know, they'll all show up in the meeting minutes. A lot of people don't consider them very, you know, important. They look at the budget and the finances and all those things are important and the rules and regulations, but read the meeting minutes of the association because that's when everyone's kind of speaking freely and you, he, you know, can, can see and hear if anything's uh, of concern that, uh, uh, that's going on in the development. Exactly. And so the number nine, we're, we're getting wrapping up now to getting close to number 10. Um, top, top mistake that buyers make is trying to time the market and waiting for a good deal, getting a, a good deal on a property. And that that is such a difficult one. I'll let John start off on that. Yeah, it, you know, gosh, look, we all wish we had that, 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 um, that magic eight ball to tell us when the right timing was. You know, that, that old saying of don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. I mean, that, that's just the best example. I, I, I've regretted every home I've ever sold in the past. I should have kept it because over time, you know, the, you know, the, yes, it goes up, it goes down, it goes up, it goes down. But over time, you know, it's been the most solid, you know, investment of anything I've ever tried to do on the investment side, both for my own, you know, for a personal residence and on, as an investment for, uh, uh, for anyone's portfolio that's buying real estate as an investment. So timing the market, by the time you realize what's going on, it's usually too late, yeah. right? You know, by the time you realize the market's hit the bottom, it's already, you know, you don't know it until it's already gone, started to go up. And by the time, you know, it's at the peak, you don't realize it till it's already happened anyway. So look, it, it, you know, analyze it all individually, you know, one thing I like to say is, look, at the one thing that doesn't change the, you know, the home values and prices can go up and down over time. But you know what, the one thing that really doesn't change much is your monthly cost. So if you're comfortable with that, whatever that number is, whether it's, you know, 2000 or 7000, right, that number generally is going to stay the same, right, and, you know, and value can go up and down. If you're comfortable with that monthly cost, look at that, pay attention to that, and 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 don't worry about trying to time the market because nobody knows exactly when it is the best time or the worst time because it's already happened by the time we realize it. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. And the other thing I like to, to advise my clients is just buy when you're ready, essentially, right? When you're comfortable, yeah. when you're ready, um, purchase like like. Like John was saying, for me too personally, like I, I, I'm very bullish on on the overall real estate market here for the long run, and it has had many fluctuations, but over time it's done quite well. And also, it's literally the roof over your head. And so, if you own the house and you're paying for your equity, versus if you're renting, then you're paying for someone else's. And so, it's a, it's there's some tax benefits as well, but overall, it's 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 you're having more control over the the roof. And so that's uh, something that you can't really say otherwise. Um, and so the last thing um, before we get into questions is top mistake that buyers make is not working with an expert realtor. Or did you say not working with Eric Chu? Is that what you uh, basically, I think that's what I heard you say. Uh, but yes, a guy like you, Eric, uh, you know, is, it, it fits that description. And, you know, again, you, you know all of these things that a buyer needs to be concerned about, but what I love about working with you and having you work at Intero is that you also just, you know, your professional expertise, but you have a personal concern for every client that you work with it, that goes deeper than, uh, than just the transaction. And, and that's, that's what matters in finding the right realtor like you, uh, Eric. And, uh, that, that you couldn't, you, it, it, it's, it's a real critical piece in the buying process. 
All right, Th thanks so much for those kind words. Let's jump into a few questions that, that I have now. Um, first one, should you work with the listing agent to, to purchase? And this is a really tough question, especially in this market. Yeah, you know, I, I know the the theory, you know, behind it is, well, I might get a better deal, right? But that's not always the case. You know, I, again, my answer is going to be, it depends. You know, that's, it's, it's a risky move. I, I always like each client and each party having their own representation. Uh, that is, um, you know, generally the better way to go. Um, but, you know, again, there's always exceptions to that. But for the most part, um, you know, if if you if you have a trusted buyer's agent, use them. No matter who the listing agent is, that that's the smartest way to go. Yeah, I'm, I have nothing else to add to that. Um, the second second question is um, second home inspections. Um, what what are your thoughts on that? So my thoughts on it, again, I'll just echo uh, John is that it depends. Um, for certain home inspectors that, that I've had experience with, um, some are super detail oriented, super thorough, and other ones are not exactly that. <laughs> and so for those ones that are on the other side, then I, I highly recommend my clients to have a second opinion. Um, with, with, we'll answer the, go to the next question about what, um, how to make an offer, but essentially a lot of times um, with the second home inspection, the, you're getting the opinion mainly for yourself. Um, not to really negotiate with, with the seller in our market, but it's, it's just good to know and to have um, an, a, or an expert if, if the first one is not as, not as good. You know, I, it, it's interesting, Eric, right? That this isn't the time to, to, to be cheap, right? You know, uh, I mean, I'm looking at the home that you just listed behind you, right? It's a beautiful yeah. looking home. It's in Las Gatas. Somebody's going to invest, you know, two, three million, whatever. I can't remember what you said. The house was uh, about two and a half million dollars, right? And yeah. we're worried about a $500 home inspection cost yeah. on two and a half million dollar investment. Um, the answer is don't. I, I mean, it's it's pennies when you look at, when you can, if anything, you, you do one of two things. It either confirms what the first inspection already said, then great, good. You should feel good about that. If it raises a lot of other questions, if two inspectors have completely different views on a house, then there's reason then to ask, all right, well, what really is the condition that I'm looking at, right, of this property? Um, I know it doesn't, it doesn't uh, excite a lot of listing agents when a buyer does that, when they get their own inspections, when the seller already provided some. But again, it goes back to what what you said in number 10, not working with an expert buyer realtor. Eric, you know, kind of like you can read a home inspection or a termite inspection and know that ah, this is not a very good inspection. It yeah. was not written well. I can just tell the way, you know, from what I see at the property and what I'm reading, we should have it, you know, we should have a second inspection done. And, that, and that's what I would rely on is the advice of whoever the buyer's agent is. That's great. And last question before we go is what are the steps um, required in an offer? Um, so I'll quickly go through that. So pre-approval, um, proof of funds of so the down payment, and then the, the structure of the offer. Um, there's a lot of things to go into it. We'll just briefly touch. There's more that you can follow up with me later if you want in detail, but essentially the contingencies, um, the price and, and the length of the escrow. So the contingencies are the, the um, loan contingency, appraisal contingency and property inspection contingency. So those are kind of the, like a quick, quick overview of the um, offer process. Yeah, those are, those are the hot buttons the seller is gonna look at, right? In addition to the, it's not always just the price, mm -hmm. right? It's the other terms. Um, I know you have represented many buyers where you weren't the highest price, but right. you have less terms for the seller Right, that that uh, made your offer more attractive. So again, it goes back to having that good buyer's agent to help you, you know, um, present the offer in its best light, both in price and in the terms that you're uh, offering to the seller with contingencies and the speed of them, and your approvals, your loan approvals, and your close of escrows, and 
you know, rent backs and all those different things that, that all can make, make a big difference to a seller picking you as a buyer versus not. Yep. Um, so that pretty much wraps up. We got it in 30 minutes. Super happy about that. Um, thank you, John. And if anyone has any further questions, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my contact information is right there. I um, really appreciate your time. And thank you for everyone for their referrals and their support. And also to John for joining us today. Happy to, Eric. All right. Good job. Adios. Thank you.